I think uh, of all these new way for a way to say it of horror films and in this case revenge films is the one that one of the ones that has resonated more with me in the sense that I do feel that it subverts certain rules of the genre. So I wanted to talk to you about uh, a little bit uh, about different elements of why I think. And the first is the style, the approach, the mood that you establish, which is closer to me at least to something like Montreal, for example. I'm far away from exploitation films and so forth. So uh, I wanted to ask you about the, the approach. Yeah, great. Um, I think for us, uh, you know, we connected as friends uh, just with our shared histories of trauma and abuse in our past. And it was really important for us to try to capture a visceral experience for the audience. Yeah, it was uh, less about um, the genre and more about our, um, our personal experiences and translating that to an audience. Yeah, and it's really about trying to capture the post-traumatic stress that the body goes through. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, it, we, we knew we wanted this whole film to be told from this one woman's perspective and specifically within this, uh, the rape revenge genre, we're so used to seeing uh, wish fulfillment. Um, we, the, the climax of the movie is the revenge itself. It's sensational, it's um, really cathartic and we cheer, it was celebratory, you know? And, and for us, it, we wanted to do something completely different. It's almost an anti-revenge film because we put the, re the act of revenge, that violent moment in the middle of the movie. And it's really as much about the revenge as it is about the toll it takes on Miriam. So, you know, how does it corrode her morality? How does it um, challenge her, you know, emotional, psychological underpinning as a character? And how does it uh, impact and or destroy her relationships around her? That's really, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what was important to us. And in many ways, it was designed to kind of scare you into not wanting to seek revenge, because you can see kind of how it really, the toll it takes on this one person. I think stylistically as well, we're very, um big fans of European cinema um, and some films that, that we really loved, Michael Haneke's work and, and Catherine Briatt's work, for example, um, are things that, we, that really resonate with us. Yeah, I mean, visually, I don't really see a comparison to Lars von Trier's work at all, visually, um, but I understand- But thematically. Thematically, sure. I, I can see a connection there. I think for us, what was really important is um, the utilization of natural light, like trying to create mm -hmm. Um, how do you control a mood and a create a feeling, this kind of foreboding, unsettling sense of dread that runs throughout the movie? How do you create that just utilizing available light and shooting at very specific times of day, like twilight and dawn and dusk, so that you can have a very specific feeling um, while just grounding the film in a level of naturalism? Again, uh, one of the things that I feel it's very different from especially rip and revenge films is that there's the, the antagonists, for a way to say it, are very defined, like in the sense that they are criminals or they are unknown men to the protagonists. And in your case, I think it relates to a lot of stories that we le are learning more now that these cases of abuse happen in a quote unquote safe space and with people close to you. In this case, of course, his brother in law. And not only we understand they are friends from back in the day. So, in that sense, how was your approach to that whole uh, scenario? Yeah, I mean, for us, it really just came from personal experiences. You know, when we came forward and started talking about our own personal stories, we there was a common thread. It was someone we knew, someone we trusted, someone that uh, it wasn't a stranger in an alleyway. And mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to see something that really portrayed our experiences. And at the same time, it makes the film more complicated because you see this character, he's affable, he's charming. And he's kind, he's kind, he's accepting so of you, her in a way that, that her sister isn't, for example. Yeah, and so when, when he does that, that, you know, that horrific thing to her, um, you feel betrayed as an audience because you, you maybe grew, grew to like him a little bit and, and that makes it far more complicated and challenging because how do you deal with these types of situations of assault when it's someone close to you, when it's someone that you, you, you care about and I think what was really fascinating to us with, with particularly the, the scene in the tool shed was that she gives him an out. There's, there's room within their friendship, within their relationship for, the, for that mistake. If he can acknowledge it, if he could apologize and own it, she left room in their relationship. And because he gaslights her, because he becomes defensive, um, you, you, it takes you know, a really dark turn. But that was really important to us uh, because it's something 
we're not really seeing portrayed and um, we feel like it's, it's really common. And I guess that's where, because I also feel that part of the motivation uh, of uh, taking this act of revenge is that the reaction of both um, his brother-in-law and also her sister. Um, so I wanted to talk about a bit about that in, in the sense that I think it's as tough to deal for her in, in the sense, not only the act of abuse, but how people react to her uh, sharing his story. Her search, sir. Yeah, I think in a way the reaction of her sister is almost worse to her than what uh, the the act um, of what Dylan's character does to her. Um, and I think that's again just a deepening of this discussion where when the um, the rapist or the perpetrator of uh, sexual abuse is a stranger it's so much um, more black and white. It's so easy to see this is the villain and they've done this thing and you get your um, kind of army of support behind you. But when it's a person who you know, the chances are all of your family knows them too, all of your friends know them too. So there's all of this baggage and these different perspectives um, that just kind of make, can have the potential to make the trauma even worse by, by the reactions of the people around you. Uh, talking about the act, of, the actual act of, of revenge, I, I actually watched this film, uh, The Sundance, Virtual Sundance, and it, it was the only one that asked me to confirm my age. So in that sense, I mean, it's a very strong and brutal film, but at the same time, I think the actual scene is more suggestive in the sense that we understand what is going on, but we don't actually, aside of a few... Uh, explicit scenes, we don't actually see it. So in, in that sense, uh, how was that approach to the violence of, of the film? Yeah, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that we wanted to treat the violence in the same way that we treated the, the full frontal male nudity and, and the way the aesthetic of the film is presented, which is how do we ground this in as much real, realism as possible? And instead of leaning on gore, um, or torture or cinematic or... techniques that kind of draw you into, make you gasp, draw you into that violence, kind of really push the, the blood and uh, gore in your face. Yeah, how, do we, how can we stay away from those tropes? And instead, like, try to put you in the space. And there's something more horrific about witnessing a long, uninterrupted, violent act in a wide shot than seeing a close-up of blood spurting from a neck. And I think for us, we were really influenced consciously by you know films like cachet where there's a really explicit graphic violent act just one moment in the film and and Catherine Briot's film factor i remember being so stunned by the violence in that in a way that really like pu punched me in the stomach and it's not gory but it's you're witnessing something that feels real mm -hmm. and because it's uninterrupted because you're witnessing it from afar you really feel present and um, violence should be horrific and I think that there's this direction that the, the genre is sometimes taking where we become desensitized by violence and so it's not impacting us in the way it should. It should be grotesque, it should be ugly and it should be something that we try to avoid. In the sense of the structure and uh, because it without the spoiling of course um, it left me with the feeling of what is going to happen between the sisters? I think that was my whole, um, you know, my whole approach to that whole uh, final part of the film. Uh, and we understand it's going to be so bad when she finds out what happened. So in that sense, uh, can you comment about that, uh, expand that decision of making a film in a non-narrative traditional way? Yeah, we. it was uh, really the most, important thing for us was the relationship between these two sisters um, and we, we repeated that to ourselves when we were writing the script and then when we were uh, rehearsing and when we were, when we were shooting and then again when we were editing we actually did the exercise when we were editing of putting the film into a linear order to see how it played out um, and it was it was really a worthwhile exercise to do because it suddenly the relationship between the sisters was lost um, and it again reminded us why we had written it in this nonlinear way, which is to show that by the end of it, even though she believes, the protagonist believes that she is saving her sister and she's convinced herself that she is this 
um, this white knight, this savior figure, and that she's doing everything um, for her sister, she realizes that she's not. Going back to, to that uh, rape and revenge, uh, I know you consider anti, uh, but what, what, how do you feel about those old movies? Like for example, uh, I Spit on Your Grave or um, Last House on the Left, Miss 45, a thriller. Uh, do you see some feminist uh, feminism uh, there that it's genuine or, or what do you think about them? I, th I mean, I I think that I'm, I am a very outspoken feminist and I've always been drawn to those kinds of movies. Um, but I do think that there's some problematic areas within them and there's definitely a conversation that is evolving um, with those types of films. And I think it's, it's fantastic that there's this, um, there is this wealth of these types of films that are um, kind of pushing the conversation forwards and becoming a little bit more nuanced and becoming more feminist and not relying on certain tropes as much anymore. Um, but I think it's that those films are still incredibly valid and valuable um, in the progression of, of the rape and revenge uh, genre.